Good afternoon, my name is Don Pizzette, and I'm going to be showing you one of the new features in Microsoft Project 2010 today. It's the Inactivate Task feature. This is a feature that was introduced in Project 2010, and it's actually a pretty neat tool that allows us to basically hide a task and make it no longer affect our project as a whole, but not delete it outright, not just completely get it out of the project. That way we can bring it in and take it out and we can really use it for some nice what if type scenarios. So it's a very useful tool and it's, it's great to have. In project 2007, the closest thing we had to this would be PERT analysis, which is really not the same. With PERT analysis, we could do a optimistic, pessimistic and most likely scenario for what an activity would take, you know, what the duration would be or, or whatever. And we could do the PERT analysis, calculate it out and take a look at it. And you could even view your project as if the optimistic or if the pessimistic situation was happening. The problem was it did it for the whole project. We couldn't just do it for a single activity. Well, with the inactivate task option, we can. We can do it for a single activity. So I've whipped up a, a quick project here, just kind of a construction project, clearing the land to build a house, laying a foundation, installing frame, and so forth. I'm, I'm not a construction person. I'm an IT guy. But, uh, uh, but anyhow, it seemed like a pretty simple uh, example to use. In this case, laying the foundation, I've got listed as taking three days. What if I get a quote from one vendor saying it's going to take three days? But I get a quote from another vendor saying, there's no way you can get it done in three days. It's going to take five days. Or what if I'm just trying to plan for delay? Hey, it might rain. If it rains, we might have to wait an extra two days to be able to, uh, to take that into account. So in that case, if I want to, to do what ifs, you know, multiple vendors or multiple scenarios, what I can do is I can take lay a foundation here. I'm just going to copy that activity and I'll just paste it right back in here. Okay, so now I've got lay a foundation listed twice. I'm going to take my second lay a foundation and I'm going to just rename it a little bit here to say that it's got rain delay factored in. Okay, so now it's lay a foundation with a rain delay added in. Okay, so, uh, so let me get that and kind of fit on the screen a little better here. Okay, now I'm going to take the rain delay and say that that particular one is going to be five days instead of three days. So if it rains, it's going to take five days. If it doesn't rain, it's going to take three days. But you'll notice over here in my Gantt chart that both of those activities are listed. I've got my lay a foundation here and I've got my lay a foundation with a rain delay here. Well, the dependencies are not set properly for the activity that I copied. It doesn't automatically build those dependencies. So I'm going to set the predecessor items here to make sure that these are all linked together. So for example, both rain delays should be preceded by activity two. And then activity five here, which was whatever we do after the foundation is done, installing the frame apparently, should be dependent on both three and four. So I'm just going to modify this to include both of those so that they're now both in line. And I can see that on the right side here that basically I clear the land and when that's done, I can lay the foundation or lay the foundation with a rain delay. Either way, I can't install the frame of the house until that foundation is dry. And so I see that here, both the activities are listed and we've got this delay in between. The problem is these are going to show up as actual activities. If I have costs associated with them, when I run my report, I'll now see double the cost. Or if I have individual resources, maybe a, a PM or somebody like that assigned to the activity, well, they're going to show up as being over allocated. They're allocated to two activities at the same time. That's where the inactivate task bit comes in. I can take lay a foundation with a rain delay and I can hit the inactivate task button here. When I inactivate that, it doesn't delete the task, it just hides it. It's now a hidden task that no longer affects my project. Notice how lay a foundation happens. It takes three days and it runs into a Friday. So we've got a weekend in between. But then install frame can start on Monday, no problem. It starts up and our activity goes as expected. That's perfect. My project as a whole is 24 days right now. If I reactivate lay a foundation with the rain delay and instead deactivate lay the foundation, now I can see laying the foundation takes longer. It goes on to Tuesday and installing the frame cannot start until Wednesday. Now my project is 26 days long. The cool part about this is if I only have two scenarios, I can highlight them both 
And when I hit activate or inactivate a task, it's just going to switch between the two. So it's very easily, easily done, you know, switching between the tasks and being able to see how that affects my project. Here I'm at 24 days. Now I'm back to 26 days again, so real easy to do. If you have more than two scenarios though, you can't do it as easily as that, but you could deactivate the other scenarios, activate the one that you wanna see, and now your project is updated. The best part about this is that these inactive tasks don't affect your reports. They don't show up in your costs, your resource usage, your task usage, they don't show up in there. So it's, it's really completely removed as far as the project is concerned. Couple of footnotes here. First off, this feature is a Project 2010 only feature, which means if you've got Project 2007, the feature wasn't there. Also, if you're opening a Project 2007 project in Project 2010, the feature won't be there until you save the project as a 2010 project. So you've got to convert that file before this feature will work. The button will show up, but it won't let you use it when it's a Project 2007 project. The other thing is, as you start to add more and more of these inactive tasks, it can start to clutter up your screen. You get more and more that's on there. And so Microsoft actually put a filter in place right out of the box that can help to hide with that. If I switch over to my view screen here, I can go to my filtering and I can turn on, I can try and turn on, there we go, the active tasks filter. Now it completely removes the hidden tasks. I no longer see the inactive activity that I, I hit a few moments ago. So now I just see lay a foundation with rain delay and that's it. If I go back to viewing all activities and I switch these two, now I can go back. I can tell it to only show me my active activities There we go. And now I see laying the foundation without a rain delay and here's my project and off I go. So a great new feature, wonderful thing in, in project 2010 and, and yet another reason to upgrade. I hope you enjoyed my quick little tutorial lesson there and I will see you the next time around. Again, my name is Don Pazette and it was uh, a pleasure talking to you.